are back at Hollywood Smoke in the beautiful city of Santa Monica. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Doug Fisher and Michael Baca. Gentlemen, Sergey Kovalev and Andre Ward are scheduled for a collision course sometime in the fall. Uh, Mike, going couple back a couple of weeks, Ward easily shuts down Sullivan Barrera. Did it look like Andre Ward to you, a reasonable facsimile? I thought his boxing IQ was still there. Physically, I don't know if he was, if he's at his peak, like at the end of the Super 6. Right. Um, but I thought, he, I thought he fought well. And again, he hasn't had uh, many fights in the ring in the past. You know, what, two, the past Three four? Three years. Yeah. Almost four years. Yeah. And Sullivan Barrera, was a, he was a game opponent, uh, unbeaten, uh, not proven. But I think Andre Ward did a fine job of, you know, he, he outclassed him. Let's face it. I agree. Um, and that's what I expected. Yeah. I expected Andre Ward to outbox this guy, Barrera. Barrera, uh, a former, you know, Cuban amateur. Um, and th that brings hype with it uh, among modern boxing fans. Um, I don't always buy that Cuban hype. You know, not all Cuban amateurs are created equally. You got your Guillermo Rigondeaux's. Um, and then you got guys like Barrera, yeah. you know, who were solid. They are decent athletes. But judging from Barrera's previous fights, I had never been impressed by him. There's yeah. not anything that he does um, uh, terribly well. And that's just not going to get it against a formerly elite fighter like, like Andre Ward. And I, I agree with Michael that the ring IQ was there. The ring generalship was there. Um, but to me, the sharpness was not there. Not there. And you would expect that. There's going to be some ring rust. Yeah. The guy just has not been active. And you talk about um, him not being to his, the, his form, that level that he had at the end of the Super 6. Let's just remember, the end of the Super 6 came in December of 2011. Mm. Five years is a long time in boxing. And it, it just makes me wonder, and this is a big question I have, is Andre Ward ever going to be that guy? Yeah. Is he ever going to have the form that he had when he was 26, 27, 28? I'm not sure. Um, here's what I, and here's something else I think, and I, you know, Andre Ward fans will get pissed off at me. I don't, I didn't see anything against Sullivan Barrera that should make um, Sergey Kovalev or Kathy Duva or John David Jackson worry you know about what's their eventual meeting. Uh, I spoke to John David Jackson. He said, Steve, uh, I've said for three years we knock him out. And so when I talked to him after the fight, he didn't even watch the fight live. <laughs> John, John, JD, JD just had it on the DVD. He goes, Steve, I had stuff to do with my kids. <laughs> and so I, so I said, okay, John, you're going to eventually watch the game tape. And he said, yeah. I, I go, well, what did you think? And, and John David Jackson, smoothest brother in the game, says, Steve, it was more about Sully B being bad than Andre Ward being good. Now, the day after the fight, I spoke to Abel Sanchez, who trains Golovkin. He also trains Sullivan Barrera. Right. And he was blunt. He said, Steve, I don't see anything where Andre Ward's going to hold off Sergey Kovalev. Now, th yeah. these guys even be that knockdown, yeah. that was sort of an off-balance right. knockdown. I Barrera wasn't hurt from that punch. And here's something that really surprised me, and I didn't really notice it until the post-fight interview and watching video of um, Andre Ward Marked talking up. during the post-fight press up. conference. Yeah, yeah, there was a there was abrasions around his eyes, and he gets scuffed up a little bit. But that's a sign of age, though, isn't it? Right. It's a sign well, of age. Well, the fact that you it shows up more on your skin, but it's also the fact that he was getting tagged. Yeah, and that's what the guy that didn't have a real good arsenal, didn't have a real good cleanup hook, wasn't all that sharp. And I'll say this though, Mike. One thing that I've always said about Sergey Kovalev: there's a stereotype of Eastern European fighters. Uh, everyone thought going into the Hopkins fight that Hopkins technically and strategically was going to outclass him. Well, he won 36 minutes against a master like Hopkins. I I'm telling you, I think Kovalev's jab is the absolute key in this matchup. I agree, and he works it to the body very well. And Andre Ward has not been, you know, the more cut up guy ever in his career. And now he's at 175 pounds. We'll see if. We're really going to find out if he can take that power with the strongest puncher, arguably, in the sport. Um, I thought it was interesting that Kovalev, uh, when talking about Ward, said, I don't know if I can beat him. So I think his mindset is right for this fight. Yeah. Normally, he's this confident you know, villain saying, I'm going to just knock you out. But with Ward, he's being very careful because yeah. I think he respects that boxing IQ he's going to see. Well, he Ward does. is still a very difficult riddle. Like you said, boxing IQ. But you said something interesting to me on Friday, Doug. You think that Slava Shabransky, who's in the running to be the tune-up fight for either Kovalev or right. Ward, 
You think there's a real element of danger should Ward choose him? Yeah, for Ward, absolutely. I wouldn't give Shabransky a chance uh, against Kovalev, but against Andre Ward, because I, I don't know about his chin yeah. at light heavyweight. I think Shabransky, even though he only has 16 professional fights, I think Shabransky is very live in that fight because he is a natural, big, light heavyweight. He has good power. He has world-class power. And he's uh, an underrated technician in there. He's not pretty to look at. He's a little bit awkward. He's rough around the edges. He's not a polished boxer by any stretch of the imagination, but he does have the fundamentals down. And I think that's a dangerous combination for somebody who's still getting acclimated at 175 pounds. And I'll say this. A lot of people, if, if, if and when it happens, and we're, let's keep our fingers crossed because it's a big fight and it's a, it's a fascinating matchup. When Kovalev and Ward happens, a lot of people, you're going to hear it described as a boxer versus slugger or a boxer versus puncher matchup where Ward is the, the boxer and, of course, Kovalev, the crusher, is the puncher and the slugger. It's not. It's boxer versus boxer. Mm -hmm. Just one boxer um, is more offense-minded and has world-class yeah, power. Yeah, I, I think if you're expecting Yvonne uh, Durrell against Archie Moore or uh, uh, Michael Spinks type of classic or Dwight Braxton, that's not going to happen. I, I think this fight is much more strategic than people think. Uh, one thing about the punch resistance, uh, I've heard stories in the past that Kovalev as an amateur, and again, well, I don't know what that really means, has been buzzed. But you know what? That's happened to a lot of guys. But I do know this. Andre Ward as a professional, Kenny Cost in his second professional fight, had him out on his feet. A guy by the name of Darnell Diesel Boone, who you mm -hmm. call the godfather of gatekeepers, That's right. <laughs> knocked him down in Portland. So there's a lot of factors here. Uh, in, in your mind, right now, if you're an odds maker, who do you favor, Kovalev or Ward? I favor Ward as an odds maker. Um, I take Kovalev in the fight. Uh, but it's a very, I mean, slight. I would, I would probably put him up at minus 125. Ah, old yeah. seven to five. Doug, what yeah, about I think you? it's an even money fight. Um, just looking at the matchup, but my pick would be Sergey Kovalev. Mm. Yeah, guys, I'm with you. I think it's an absolute coin toss. All right, well, that's it for this edition of Ten Count. On behalf of Doug Fisher and Michael Baca, this is Steve Kim saying till the next round. Goodbye, everybody.